Thank you, Matty Sulo. And of course, a huge day of sport today. Day two of the championships at Royal Randwick and we have racing dreams in just over an hour and a half right here on Sky News. But uh, speaking of that and bookmakers in particular, bookmakers usually get things close to the money and the price of the election being called tomorrow is very, very short. And with that, I'm joined by the member for Kingsford Smith, Labor's Matt Thistlethwaite, and from the government is member for McKellar, Jason Falinski. Jason, is it going to be called tomorrow? Uh, I don't know is the answer, but I tell you what, if it's not, Matt and I are getting back in our cars and driving down to Canberra. So I think he and I are in favour of it getting called tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so just, just imagine that you're a bookmaker, all right? Yeah, yeah. And I come up to you and say, what price will you give me? Mate, very short odds on it tomorrow. A dollar one? Probably. It's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. cool tomorrow, Matt. Yeah, it's going to be And then you're short, on the trail. Short, short money for it. Uh, Labor's ready to go. Uh, Jason's right. If he doesn't call tomorrow, we've got to go back to Parliament. The House of Representatives uh, will be sitting again on Monday. So uh, I think that the Australian public are ready for an election and the Prime Minister should just get on with it and call it so, uh, so we oh, can, Matt, I don't we can know. get out Australian there. Australian public, they're not usually... They don't really we can get like out there and start <laughs> putting our different points of view about how we're going to manage the country and uh, Labor's got a plan for a better future. I think they've got a slogan for a better future, but, mate, we're, we're going to be out there talking about cost of living, national security, getting to net zero by 2050, and, and one of my personal bugbears, which is improving home ownership, increasing home ownership so that young Australians get their shot at the Australian dream. So that's what we'll be talking it's about. It's going to be tough when interest rates rise four times before the end of the year. Um, well, I don't think it'll, that'll happen, but, yeah, we'll see an interest rate increase probably this year. Let's, let's, let's talk overseas. And, look, it's heartbreaking horrendous to watch the scenes in the Ukraine. Mm. Um, people lining up at a railway station to flee the war and the war found them this morning. It's, it's been difficult to broadcast, let alone for people to watch and for those there. Phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's shocking um, and it's heartbreaking. Uh, these, are, these are war crimes um, and not only is the invasion illegal, um, but the bombing of a maternity hospital, killing women and children, um, those mass graves that were uncovered, uh, people bound and, and shot in the back of the head, um, and now the bombing of a, of a train station, uh, that's un unconscionable. Um, and that's why Labor's been calling for the government to look to expel Russian diplomats from Australia so that we send a very strong message uh, that the international community won't tolerate this sort of behaviour and joining with nations uh, in Europe and others that have expelled Russian diplomats as well. War crimes, genocide. Um, how does a dictator like this get held to account? Well, we... Well, and Tim, that's the point. At the moment, um, the great clash that is happening is between dictatorships and democracies. If we do not, as, as those people who back democracies, uh, win and prevail in Ukraine then the consequences for us in other parts of the world, like our own region, are absolutely enormous. Everything Matt said, and there's a lot I could add to what Matt said, that the number of war crimes going on here are just horrendous. So um, we need to, uh, to essentially make sure that the rule of law and that an international-based system on the basis of law continues to prevail in the world. And the other thing I would say is the number of people in Australia, I'm sure in Matt's area as well as mine, who are accepting Ukrainian refugees into this country, hosting them, um, giving them board, et cetera, um, just uh, those refugees fleeing has, has, I really think, shown the Australian character during this time. Changing pace. Uh, look, it's going to get called tomorrow. We think that. May 21, we think that. Um, or 14. May, May yeah, yeah, if you're a bookmaker. I, mate, I, <laughs> well, I said last week, I think, May 20, the odds were good on May odds, 20. Mate, OK, yeah. well, let's say... let's. Either way, how's Albo going? He's um, got the new look, got the new threads. Your fellow Rabido supporters, um, <laughs> is, is he? Is Those he Rabido lost? supporters, they stick together. <laughs> well, it's funny you mention that. I'm going to the Rabbitohs game with Albo tonight. I'll so, tell you what. Uh, they... Hopefully, watch. Hopefully, watch them knock off between uh, Albo and his new fitness campaign <laughs> and the the new South Australian Premier. They keep you guys on your toes. <laughs> That's the right. Gym. We've all got to stay fit. <laughs> yeah. um, look, we're ready to go, um, and and Albo's uh, lost weight. Um, he's fitter. I think that that's a good thing. Uh, and I think that that demonstrates his ambition and his aspiration to lead this country. And I think it's a great thing that, that his 
ambitious for Australia. Um, and he's got an ambition to lead the country to demonstrate, uh, you know, that we've got a solution for cost of living pressure, um, that Australia can be a renewable energy superpower, that we can improve integrity in our politics by having a Fair Dinkum National Integrity Commission. They're the ambitions that Albo has for Australia, and that's what I want to see in a Prime Minister and a leader of our country. How hard is it for you with a, well, with a level of toxicity around your leader? Um, look, there's little question that Prime Minister Scott Morrison has dipped or dimmed in the view of many Australians. How hard is it for your point of view? Oh, look, I think that um, this campaign... The unfair part about the last couple of years is that Scott Morrison has been judged against the perfect and often in retrospect. And when you look at things like the, the vaccine rollout, I mean, we made the best possible decisions, same decisions a lot of other people made. Then what I consider to be one of the most uh, gross injustices of a campaign run against the AstraZeneca vaccine, you know, people turned on Scott Morrison and said, well, why didn't you pick Pfizer? Um, but the fact is that during this election campaign, it's not a referendum about Scott Morrison. It's a choice between Scott Morrison's team and Anthony Albanese's team. And all the things that Matt said are issues that we'll be talking about. And, you know, Anthony Albanese is going to have to... And his team are going to have to step up and tell us how they're going to make things better. For um, two years and 11 months, they've had nothing to say. They've got one month to prove to the Australian people that they've got better ideas, better policies and better vision. And the small glimpses that we've seen so far, I don't think it give us any cause for comfort. Plenty of challenges. And that, that is a big question for you and the Labor Party if you win office is how do you keep cost of living under control for Australians? Because uh, interest rates might not, might not go up four times, but the cost of living is, is extraordinary. Uh, petrol prices, I know they've dipped a little, but really... Yeah, it's a huge issue. Uh, and Labor's got plans to ensure that we're dealing with those issues. Our cheaper childcare policy uh, will make it uh, cheaper for people to access childcare and for more women to be able to return to the workforce. Uh, that's a great productivity dividend for our country as well as a benefit for families. Uh, we've got plans in our Powering Australia policy mm. to make electricity cheaper um, and to create 600,000 jobs um, in the meantime as well. Uh, our plans to ensure that we're manufacturing here in Australia and creating jobs here in our economy. Our plans to protect Medicare and ensure that doctors and GPs in rural and regional areas are more accessible. These are all of Labor's plans that we've outlined. Um, our, our plan to fix aged care, we've outlined all of these policies uh, and we'll continue to do so during the course of this election. We've kept it pretty polite today. We, oh, we've no. kept it and uh, we've sort of run out of time. I, I do want to ask on a much lighter subject, um, what do we think of um, Cameron Smith's mullet on the... On the uh, it was a real Australian, a pie-eating <laughs> mullet wearer, <laughs> you know, I, on the leaderboard at the US Masters. I, I'm a big supporter of the mullet, just not on me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Uh, I think he's a, a dinky die Aussie. The great thing about him is his he's scramble game, as you know, uh, Tim, that... Golf is a, is a game of psychology um, and he can have a bogey as he did yesterday on the first and the last hole, but uh, plenty of birdies in between and uh, we wish him all the best uh, and Australia's following him. Yeah, and the Tiger Woods story is quite remarkable. Yeah, golf. One day I'll play like Jack Nicholas, the next day I'll play like <laughs> Nicholas Jack. It is a very difficult game. All right, exactly right. We will know when the election's on by this time next week and uh, we'll continue this discussion all the way through to the election. Jason and Matt, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. The Northern Territory's Independent Commission Against Corruption secretly recorded a conversation with former opposition leader Gary Higgins. Sky News can reveal the covert recording.